Hello bookish people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and today's video we are going to be going over my February TBR. These are all the books I plan to read in the month of February. I got two huge stacks here. I got 20 books in total on my TBR which might seem excessive considering there's 28 days in February but my goal is to read 10 physical books and listen to 10 audiobooks. To be honest I'll probably end up listening to more audiobooks because I always listen to more than 10 audiobooks a month um, but these are the ones that we're going to start with and um, these are 10 physical books and honestly my physical TBR is way more ambitious. Um, but if I can accomplish 10 books in one month, that would be amazing. So let's get into it. Um, the first book I have, we're going to start with my physical TBR stack. And the first one is Lunar Love by Lauren Kung Justin. So this was my January book of the month pick. It is an enemies to lovers romance book. I'm actually already 30 pages into it. I'm filming this at the tail end of January. There's no way I'm going to finish it um, this month, but it's going to be a one that I bring over to next month. Honestly, I started reading this in the middle of January, but I just got distracted by other books that I really wanted to read. The first two chapters of this book didn't captivate me enough to keep me from putting it down and picking up other books, um, but it's only about 300 pages. I'm 30 pages in. We got 270 pages to go. It's totally doable in the month of February, and this is an enemies to lovers, business rivals, romance, so I am very excited to read this one. If you didn't know, I love enemies to lovers. Um, the next book I have on here is another short book, and that is Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. So it is my goal. It's kind of like an unspoken challenge I have with myself. I'm not like writing it down, making it official or anything, but I would like to read more classics in 2023. I feel like that is definitely a genre I did not read one bit from in 2022. Um, so yes, I would like to read more classics. This is one that I have been interested in. It's like an adventurous pirate story. Sounds very interesting and it's a short classic. So it is one I would really like to read next month. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm excited. The next book I have here is like the sequel, but I'm reading like the new release that's coming out and that is Finley Donovan, um, jumps the gun. This is the second book in the series, Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. I'm currently reading this one right now in January and then the new release is coming out January 31st. So obviously it's going to be on my February TBR. So um, yes, that's going to be the third book in the Finley Donovan series that is on my TBR. I'm very excited because the first two books, absolutely amazing. I love them. Um, so yes, I'm very excited to read the uh, third one. I don't want to get into like what the plot is because it all stems from the first book. So I don't want to spoil anything. But in the first Finley Donovan book, you're following this mom who has just recently been divorced and she's strapped for cash. She is also a mystery thriller author. She goes to Panera to pitch her the murder plot of her book to her agent. The lady next to her overhears everything she's saying and thinks that she is a killer for hire. Slips her a note saying that I want you to murder my husband and I will give you $50,000 to do it. And everything kind of goes a downhill from there. And I just am very excited to read the third one because I'm rereading the first two right now. And it's a great time. Even rereading them, a great time. Next, we have The Midnight Girls by Alicia Jasink. It says two rivals, one heart, and a kingdom ready to watch them burn. This is a standalone fantasy book and it's also a sapphic romance. I bought this um 2022, January 2022, when they did their 50% off hardcover sale. I was late to the party on that one. This year I was prepared. I bought lots. Last year I was late to the party. This was one of the three books that I purchased, and I can't have something on my shelf for over a year and not read it. I mean, I do. I do have a lot of books like that on my shelves, but I don't like it. So this one we have to read. And and again, 2023 is my year of fantasy. I've said that in so many videos already. So we have to start. We have to start. And this is a standalone one. So it's easy peasy. Knock it out in one shot. Um, we don't have a big series to follow. So I'm very excited to read this one. Plus it's romance, fantasy. Why like why fantasy romance? You can't beat it. You can't beat it. Nothing compares. The next two books I plan on reading in this month of February is The Crown of Midnight and Air of Fire. Crown of Midnight is more of a question mark because I'm hoping that I can squeeze it into the last two days of January. Um, but if not, it'll be on my February TBR and definitely Air of Fire I want to read as well. I just read my first Sarah J Mass book in January. I read Throne of Glass. I've owned the series for a couple months now and I just haven't read it yet. Um, and so I'm starting. I'm starting my Sarah J Mass journey, okay? Um, again, 20 through the year of fantasy and I'm very excited to read this because then I'm going to get into Akatar and then Crescent City Trilogy so yes um Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, very excited to read these. Honestly I'm waiting to get hooked. Uh Throne of Glass is great. I read it at the beginning of January but I never was like oh my god I can't wait to read Crown of Midnight. I was just like okay cool that was great what else is on my TBR you know what I mean I've never been like into it so I'm really hoping these books really pull me into the universe. 
The next book on my TBR is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. I have no idea what it's about, but I know this is the first book. I gotta read 10 to the Cosmere, and I am very excited. I am ready. I got my passport out. I am ready to journey the Cosmere. Let's go. We are starting with Mistborn. Uh, I read Trust in the Emerald Sea in January, and I was like, why have I not read any of my Brandon Sanderson on my physical TBR? Because Trust in the Emerald Sea was the best book I have ever read. I am absolutely obsessed with it. absolutely love it. By far one of my favorite fantasy novels I've ever read and I can already tell you it's going to be my top it's going to be my top five favorite books for 2023 it's become an all-time favorite just after reading it once can't wait to get the physical copy so I can annotate it so it only makes sense and now I have to go and read the rest of the Cosmere and we start with Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson um this is Miss Born era one very excited to read it and oh, I'm just so I'm, I'm very excited. Trust the Emerald Sea got me pumped. I mean, to be honest, I thrifted this book a while ago, but like the cover is so ugly. Like it's so bland and ugly and gray and depressing that I was just like so turned off by the cover, which is why I haven't gotten into the series yet. But after the Trust in the Emerald Sea, I was like, okay, I, I gotta do it. The next book, speaking of like depressing covers, this is the exact opposite. It's the cutest cover ever. Like, look at these. Like, this is what I'm drawn to, okay? This is what I'm drawn to. But like, I also like a fantasy plot. So, you know, like fantasy books don't, they don't look like this. Um, the next book on my TBR is Never Ever, Getting Back Together by Sophie Gonzalez. This is a YA contemporary romance. It's about these two girls. This is their ex-boyfriend. They go on this reality show, kind of like bachelor style to see who can win him over and then I think they end up falling in love with each other so it sounds just like a really cute little sapphic YA romance story um I'm just excited to read it I don't know I got it at the Barnes and Noble 50% off hardcover sales I'm not really huge into YA and contemporary romance anymore but there's always a few that just pique my interest this was one of them cute premise excited to read it the next book I picked up, or not picked up, this is not a haul, this is a TBR. The next book I plan on reading in February is another Brandon Sanderson book, and this is Skyward. This is a YA sci-fi. I am not someone who is very well versed in sci-fi. I am very dabble. I'm starting to dabble in the genre this year, and this is one of them that I really want to read. And because it's YA, I feel like it's going to be a lot more accessible. To be honest, adult sci-fi kind of scares me. Um, so we're going to start with some YA sci-fi. And I've heard really great things about Skyward and the Skyward series. I haven't heard the best things about the novellas, but the actual books I've heard great things about. So, um, yes, I am very excited to read this one. And so we got two Brandon Sanderson books on the TBR for this month. And the last book I have on my physical TBR, then we're going to go through my audiobook TBR. And that is Kayaki by Vashanavi Patel. And um, this book was my April book of the month pick in 2022. I have yet to read it and I am really trying to tackle my physical TBR. And here we go. This one I have to because for me, fantasy is not something I like to listen to on audio. I talk about this all the time. I really prefer to physically read fantasy than listen to it on an audiobook. I just find it to be better physically reading it. Um, so yes, I'm very excited to read this one. I mean, I was not like, this cover is really cool and stuff, but I wasn't really like obsessed with the plot, but then I was just kind of flipping through it today and I was just kind of reading the writing and I was like, Ooh, actually I kind of like this. So yeah, there we go. I'm going to read it in February. It is a bigger one. So this is kind of a, it's a hopeful. It's a hopeful. I'm prioritizing my brain and centers and that one's more of a hopeful. Okay, next we're going to get into my audiobook TBR. So I have about, I have 11 books here on my audio TBR. We shall see how it goes. Um, the first one I have on here is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. I just said I don't like to listen to fantasy on audiobook. My exception to that is if it's a reread, I will listen to it on audio because like if I zone out, it's like I already read it so I know what's happening. Um, it's more of just a refresher for me because I really want to read Heart of the Sun Warrior. I did restart this audiobook back in November. And um, I listened to about 25% of that, 25% of it that my library loan was due. I never finished it. So I want to uh, finish the last 75% of that audiobook. So then in March, I can read Heart of the Sun Warrior, which is the ending because it is a duology. And I really enjoyed this book a lot. So um, I already know that I'm going to like it. It's really just a refresher reread. The next book on my TBR is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. The reason this is on my audio TBR is because um, I have like, so the way my romance shelf is set up, I have like two stacks like this. Then I have some books in the middle, then another stack like this. So in this stack, this is the only book left in its stack that I have unread. And I don't have room on my physical TBR, so it has to go on the audio TBR because I would just love to have that completed stack of books. Because after this, I will literally have 
five unread romance books on my romance shelf, which is great because I do not like to have a physical TBR. I really developed a huge one in 2022 and I'm really trying to tackle it in 2023. So yes, this is the first one. I know this is a really smutty book, which I don't love smut listening to it via audio. I really just like to read it more than listen to it. I feel like it's cringy and awkward to listen to it. So I know this is very smutty, so it's going to be an experience, but you know what? I'll, I'll sit through it. I'll endure it because you know what? I, just, I want the stack. I want the stack completed. So there you go. The next book is I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. And this is the last Casey McQuiston book I have to read before I am caught up on all of her books. I finished Red, White, and Royal Blue in um, January. I read one last stop last year. So this is the last Casey McQuiston book. I've owned all her books and I hadn't read any of them. Like I owned all three of them before reading any of them. Um, but yes, I've re finally read the first two. This is her latest release and yeah, I'm excited. And you know what? I really like the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition for this because the OG cover is like green, but I really love the purples. So I don't really know what this is about. I think it's like romance with kind of like a mystery to it. I don't, I wasn't going to say mystery thriller, but it's not like thriller. It's just like kind of mystery romance, I guess. Um, so yes, excited to read this. So then I'll have all of Casey McQuiston's book completed. As you can see, I like to pick things that are easy. It's like, okay, I own three of her books. I only have one left. Let's do it. So they're all just done. Um, like my romance shelf, I only got five books left. Let's just read them so that it'll all be done. Um, next on my audiobook TBR, is Summer of 69 by Ellen Hildebrand. I love Ellen Hildebrand. I've talked about her so many times on my channel and she's been in so many of my wrap-ups. I read eight of her books in 2022. Absolutely loved her. I have yet to read one of her books in January, which I feel like is good because I feel like Thursday, not Thursday. Why did I say Thursday? Um, November and December, I really binged a bunch of her books and January was a nice little break from her books and we're going to go back into them in February. And this is one I'm really like, interested in because I don't know why I'm really feeling like a historical fiction moment and this is that this is that this is historical fiction normally she does contemporary fiction so usually her stories take place in present day or whenever she written them which is usually like 2010 2015 2020 like you know all those years but um yes this is historical fiction I'm excited to read it. I love her books. They're usually a multiple POV and her character is always just going through like interesting life things and some of them can be quite depressing but everyone's hopeful and there's usually and always a found family element to it and I just really enjoy her work and her characters and everything. Everything, everything, everything. She is definitely one of my favorite authors. The next two books I have are very short audiobooks so honestly I could probably listen to both of them in one day. They're five hour audiobooks. Let's go on two times speed, two and a half hours. Can definitely listen to both of these. Um, the first one, and they're both nonfiction books as well. The first one is The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering, Decluttering and Organizing by Marie Kondo. Um, I purchased this book. I've never watched Marie Kondo's like show. I just like know a lot of people have talked about her. I really only got this because I was at the thrift store and I found it. I recognize her name. I'm interested in reading more nonfiction, and this seems like an easy one to read. So there we go. And plus, I could always use need help. I always need help with organizing, decluttering, and cleaning. It's not my strong suit, okay? I'm I'm somebody. I'm a hoarder. I'm not actually a hoarder, but like I hate throwing things away. I love to have ex excess of everything. I'm a maximalist. I'm not a minimalist. So maybe this will help me change my ways. The next book is My Body by Emily Ratajkowski, and this is, I think she is a supermodel, like, I, I'm pretty, yes, I know she is a supermodel. Um, she's a model, and this is basically about, like, people objectifying her body, or just, like, the way, like, society views women and women's body. I don't know, it's just, like, a really important topic. I'm interested to read it, and it's, like, a two and a half hour audiobook, and yeah, I'm excited. Excited for that one. The next book on my audio TBR is Verity by Colleen Hoover. This will be the first Colleen Hoover book I have ever read. I hear it is a super messed up book and I've just heard a lot of crazy things about it. Well, I heard people say that it's like the most insane crazy book they've ever read. Like, Colleen Hoover, are you okay? Um, but I haven't heard really anything about the plot because people don't really talk about it because, you know, it's probably best to go in blind. I recently got the um, audiobook through Audible sale. Yeah, I was going to say through an Audible two for one book sale. And um, it's actually an Audible exclusive audiobook. So now that I have access to the audiobooks about it, I will be reading it very, very soon. Um, so yes, I'm very excited to read this one. The next book on my audio TBR is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So I have How to Sell a Haunted House, the books over there, and the audiobook just came through on Libby for me, so I'm hoping to finish that one in January. And this one I'm going to read in February. It's really my goal to read all of Grady Hendrix's books because I read two of his books, Horror Store and the 
uh, Southern Book Club Guide, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Not an easy title to say. And I absolutely love both of those. So I'm really trying to read all of his work. And this is the one that I'm hoping to read in February. Next book on my TBR is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. I know she has a new release coming out in 2022. I'm not sure what month it is, but um, this one I learned about on Katie Colson's channel and she basically said it's about a couple, but it's like a serial killer couple and I just think that's such an interesting premise for a mystery thriller and I absolutely love it. it sounds like some messed up American horror story type of stuff. And you know, I love American Horror Story and that's just the vibe that premise gives me. So I honestly did not even read the synopsis of this book. I found it in the thrift store. It was on my TBR. And then I found it at a thrift store. I was like, this is a sign. I have to read it. And I've just been really dying to read it ever since. So this is definitely on my top priority list in February. And honestly, look how the knife gleams in the light like a real knife. That is so cool. The next book on my audio TBR is The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Um, this won the best mystery thriller, I believe, in 2020 or 2021. When did this come out? I don't really... <laughs> Oh my god, this is so cute. I thrifted this and someone wrote right here, people on FB say they can't put this down. That is so cute. I love that. Okay, I live in a very like retirement area of Florida and I just know it was like some elderly lady writing that down and I think that's the cutest thing or maybe an elderly man, who knows. Um, Let's see, when did this come out? This came out in 2021. Okay, so this won the 2021 Best Mystery Thriller Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to read it. Honestly though, I haven't heard the best things about it but it did win I thrifted it so like I don't really care if it's good or bad I probably only spent two dollars on it but I'm excited to read it and it's a shorter book as well so it'll be a quick audiobook I believe it's about um this couple it's a a guy his son and then he has like no a guy and his daughter then he marries this lady so that would be the daughter's like stepmom the guy disappears and says take care of her for me and I guess they're trying to find him as I believe the premise. And the very last book on my TBR for this month is City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. And this is a chonky one. It is a chunker. This is a brick. This is how many pages long? Um, This is actually, oh, it's not that bad. Okay, it's like 700. Okay, it's a lot. It's like 700 pages. It is a lot. Um, I'm going to be listening to the audiobook for this. I know I have said multiple times and made my feelings well known about listening to fantasy via audiobook, but I desperately want to finish the Mortal Instruments series. I have been reading it for three years at this point, and I have no desire to read this book, but I have lots of desires to just finish the series and be done with it. Um, so I feel like the only way I'm really going to be able to finish this book is by listening to the audiobook. And I don't know why, because I have enjoyed all the Mortal Instruments books that I have read. I just think I let so much time pass between five and this one that I just don't really care. I mean, okay, the thing is, okay, I enjoyed the first one. I enjoyed the second one. I kind of took a break from it. And then I binged City of Glass and then the next, the fourth one. And then I binged the fifth one. I only read half of it. And I was like, okay, like I've read too many of these back to back to back. Like I'm bored of it. Um, and then I ended up listening to the audiobook in 2022. And that's the only Mortal Instruments book I read in 2022. So yeah, I started this in 2020, you guys. We got to finish it. We got to finish this series. I think I just like binged it too close in a row together or I waited too long. I don't know. Something happened with the timing and yeah, 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 yeah. We just, we got to finish it. And it's unfortunate too, because this is, a, I actually bought this off Amazon, like brand new too. All the other Immortal Instruments books that I have, I thrifted. This is, I was, I was so excited because I was like reading the fourth one. I was like, I'm gonna binge the rest of this series. I bought this brand new on Amazon, lost all interest. Um, so yeah, we are going to be doing this. And then after this, I just want to continue in the Shadowhunter world. I think I'm just like bored of this specific series, but I want to read her other series. Um, yeah, I, would, I need to continue the Shadowhunter world. I think after this, now let me know in the comments what you guys recommend. After this, should I read The Infernal Devices or should I read The Eldest Curses? Because I looked up how to read The Shadowhunter world and I've seen some people say read this one, like read Mortal Instruments and then read Dark uh, The Infernal Devices. Or I've seen other people say read um, Eldest Curses, then Infernal Devices. So let me know what you guys recommend in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. This is an ambitious February TBR. I feel like we can do it. So let me know what your February TBR is like. Let me know what your January reading month was like. I would like to know. Um, I would like to know all things about your reading goals and your reading updates.
down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe, like this video if you like book of the month predictions, wrap ups, um, TBRs, book hauls, the occasional vlog here and there. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.